Hi folks and welcome to this week's edition of Outdoors with Bob Coker. We're going to take you on an exciting episode. We're going to take you to South Africa with Lash LaRue Safaris. And what a trip it was, folks. Folks, the accommodations there are five star. Lodging, food, great. Tennis courts, swimming, swimming pools. Swimming pool, you name it, he's got it for the whole family. And, and by the way, I took my whole family. Yeah. When you leave that lodge, you start driving, you see animals everywhere. We saw giraffes. Wildebeest. We saw, of course, sable, which is what I'm going to be hunting on this episode. Right. And folks, we're going to start out our hunt in a rhino labs blind. Yep. And, well, we'll over a water hole. And, folks, we got our noisemaker set on the cricket mode, and we're going to take you right to the hunt. Folks, one thing you got to realize when you're in Africa is a lot of times you have females behind the males. The females are more expensive than the male. At least in the Sables case, they're a lot more expensive. And Lash really was on me about make sure you yeah. do get a pass through and take out one of my females. Female. Right. So, you know, I had a lot of opportunities to take shots at this uh, male Sable where he was broadside, but there were animals on the other right. side of him. It's tough. And you can't always tell by the camera angle because Bob's sitting, you know, four feet to the left, so. So what I'm looking at and what the camera's showing y'all isn't necessarily the same thing. Right. You 
know, Bob, once I started to wake you up and tell you, hey, why don't you go ahead and shoot, but you were snoozing so good. I know I had about an eight second opportunity where I had a broadside shot and there weren't any animals on the other side of it. But really what I was looking for is he was coming to that water and I, I wanted him to have his head down in the water because he was very skittish and I knew he was going to jump string, but I felt like if his head was already down into the water, he'd jump string. Sounds like a good excuse for I just wasn't ready. I just wasn't ready. <laughs> Folks, when he finally did put his head down in the water, he was quartering to me and it just wasn't an ethical shot. Right, and you don't want to do that. Well, folks, the sable walked off, uh, didn't give me another opportunity, but we still had a little bit of daylight left, so we kind of stuck there in the blind and you know, when me and Dana hunt, we always both take a bow in case there's something I don't want to shoot that he wants to shoot and whatever. And when you're hunting over a water hole in a blind, you never know. You never know what's going to come in. And buddy, this steam buck come in, he called, I think Dana was asleep because he <laughs> caught him by surprise. Yeah, I wasn't ready when he first came in. Uh, he was probably standing there 20 seconds, but you got to remember that I was the primary cameraman because we were hunting sable, so I had to give Bob the camera, get my release on my hand, get the arrow knocked up. So, you'll see. It's a male. While we were waiting for my steamboat to expire, lo and behold, the herd circled all the way around and came back in from our left. The herd of sable did. Right, and Bob's back on again. Drinking now, or is he in the back? He's one drinking. Yeah, he's 
that male herd bull went straight to the water like we wanted him to. But he's facing us again. Again, folks. No shot. Sure enough, folks, when he left the water and started walking away, he gave me a perfect broadside shot, but guess what? Females behind him again. The females and the young males were all behind him. I couldn't get a shot. So, folks, we're going to take a commercial break. When we come back, we're going to show you the recovery of Dana Steenbuck. Rhino Lab blind. It's a great blind for Africa, for Texas, for anywhere where you can't get up in a tree. You want to be concealed, it keeps your scent in. These animals never knew we were even in the world. This steamboat came out and he came to the salt lick, but he only stayed there like 20 seconds. I had to get my release, get it ready, get an arrow. I just didn't have time. And so he started walking off and um, he was just going, so I whistled, he didn't hear me. And I whistled louder, he stopped. And uh, I can see my luminoc right over here on the ground, so let's go check and see the blood. Right here's a mineral lick. Right there is my arrow, so I guess he went maybe 10 yards. It was about a 35 yard shot on an animal about as big as a jackrabbit from Texas. Arrow. It's absolutely covered in blood. And we've been right about here. Oh, there he is. He's laying right there, Bob. My gosh, he didn't go anywhere. All right, folks. Look at this. This is a trophy steam buck. He's got one side broke off, but hey, that's okay. I mean, it just adds character to me. That means he's been a been a fighter, a tough little dude. Well, it's a beautiful animal. It's gonna look great on my trophy room wall. Steam buck in South Africa. Folks, this guy right here, you need to call him the numbers at the bottom of the screen, Lash LaRue Safaris here in South Africa. Man, we have had a ball. We have seen hundreds and hundreds of animals. I just can't, I just can't say enough about this place. What do you think about this one? I can congratulate you on your first one of the small five. The small <laughs> So now you can start with the rest of them. Yep. And yeah, this is a good one. He's a beautiful little animal. Not much bigger than a jackrabbit. Folks, the next day we started sable hunting again, only today we decided we were going to do some spotting and stalking. Right, folks, it was very hot that day, and, well, they needed a little deodorant. <laughs> or maybe a little scent blocker, so. So uh, we, we sprayed uh, scent shield on both me and uh, Lash, and folks will see if it works.
Well, folks, as soon as we started our spot and stop, we ran into a herd of Bontabuck, which was also on our list. Yes, I wanted to shoot one of them real bad. But they had other ideas. Yeah, they were blowing at us and alerting everything in the forest where we were. And I decided to range them, see how far they were. And lo and behold, I saw in my rangefinder this nice saber. So I decided, well, maybe we won't do a Bontabuck hunt. Yeah. <laughs> But, uh, you know, with them blowing, I didn't really think there was much of a chance to get on that sable. Well, folks, we're going to go to commercial break and we'll get back. We'll let you know whether those bonobos messed us up or not. Well, folks, fortunately for Bob, the bonobos went this way, the sable went this way, and we went this way. And then the sable, <laughs> he finally calmed down and we was able to catch up with him. Tell you what, this sable hunting is hard. They're one of the smartest of the antelope family here in uh, South Africa, and I'm telling you, we've been trying to hunt a sable now for six days. We've been doing it out of a blind. We've been doing spot and stalk. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. This is a magnificent animal. I have wanted one for a long time. Thank you, Lash, folks. Lash Larue Safaris. That's the place you get you a sable. Give him about 40, 50 minutes. Give me a high five our data. Oh, yeah! Give him about 40 minutes, maybe 50 minutes, and we'll go find that puppy. Put a good swag daddy on him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Well, folks, right here's where he was standing. Uh, it's only been about 15 minutes. Uh, it's pretty warm here in South Africa, and uh, you don't let them lay as long as you do back home because of the heat it'll cause the hair to slip so uh, we're gonna go ahead and try to find some blood and see if we can get on the track and Lash has called his uh, number one ace tracker William and we're gonna put him on the track because it doesn't seem to be any blood right here and maybe we'll find some blood and, and uh, be able to find this animal in a short order of time I had to come out of that long sleeve shirt it's hot Well, folks, this is a magnificent specimen of a trophy sable. I, I'm, I'm going to guess this, this, what's the age of this thing? At least eight years old. He's at least eight years old uh, in his prime. Uh, they don't come any better than this. This is absolutely a trophy. Uh, he didn't bleed a lot. Uh, hit him in the right spot, but it was a sharp, angling away shot. And there just wasn't much blood. And I got to tell you, his number one tracker here, William, if it wasn't for him, we never would have found this animal. Uh, I, I just can't say enough about uh, Lash LaRue Safaris. He's got all kinds of game. He has uh, excellent accommodations, uh, courteous uh, workers that work for him, and just loads and loads of trophy game. We, you, you can't even go out of the... Uh, combines of the camp without seeing hundreds of animals. Uh, how many different species of animals do you have here in this location? 28 species we hunt. He has over 20, he has 28 species that they hunt in this one camp alone, plus he has accommodations where he can take you on dangerous game hunts. Folks, if you want to go on a South Africa hunt, it's very economical. I highly recommend Lash LaRue Safaris. Just call the number at the bottom of the screen. You'll be surprised at how economical it is, and I guarantee you, you'll be coming back. Folks, until next week, be safe, shoot them straight, and may God bless. We'll see you next week on Outdoors with Bob Coker. Thank you, Lash. Thank you, William. Appreciate it, buddy. Appreciate it.